Hey guys, welcome back to Watch Trading Academy. And today we're gonna to be talking about this very interesting topic. Why do watch dealers panic about Rolex prices falling? I mean, listen, we know it anytime you're in a falling market and you're holding goods that are worth X amount, obviously your money is going to be coming down with the good, right? So if you have a million dollars, that's what the good is worth today on the street, then later, just like cocaine, right? And then later that becomes worth $500,000 because that's what people are paying for it and that's what the value of it is. Obviously, it seems like you lost half of your dollar. And reality is part of that is true and part of that is not because that's not how watch trading works. We're gonna explain to you exactly step-by-step step why that isn't as simple as that and why it really, really doesn't necessarily mean that people are gonna collapse when watch pricing falls. We know that watches uh, from people that were pretending to be dealers or pretending to be rich in the space and held watches not understanding what they were doing, those guys were wiped off, they were putting their money in crypto and all kinds of crap and they're done, right? We're gonna talk about why that's not necessarily a bad thing if you're a real dealer or moving real watches and real units and why that's okay even if your entire portfolio comes down in its natural value. But lately, a lot of dealers or a lot of people are a Rolex, not ADs, but like dealers, like secondary dealers are panicking about the pricing of a Rolex coming down. So we knew that Rolex pricing was gonna come down ahead when the dollar got really strong. This was very real. We knew Rolex pricing would fall down when the crypto markets fell. So like these are not <clears throat> random things. You can actually refer back to a video I did a long time ago when people asked me, would watches keep rising forever? And I said, one thing that could create a huge collapse, an unexpected collapse, if you took a trillion dollar market like crypto and wiped it, and they did just that. So <clears throat> that collapsed the market. So it was exactly what I said could happen that could trigger it, uh, and it did, and there were other things that caused that, but the dollar got really strong, so assets usually go down when that happens uh, in that place where, where the, the <clears throat> where the currency is strong because people aren't buying, uh, foreigners aren't buying, they're not moving basically units out. So the, the volume is lowering itself and whenever volume and liquidity lowers itself, obviously pricing has to follow down. Nothing rare or, or different. Dealers panic when, when Rolex prices come down because Rolex still, and I think will keep being for the long and short term, the most uh, wanted brand in the world because more people are basically seeking it. So it's like the most commonly known luxury brand in the world and it, and it moves more units than everything else almost combined, right? So <clears throat> when dealers lose in their prime premier commodity, which is what they have to carry to attract clients, when the margins are so thin, they start to panic the most. And this is really important to understand because you see most watches have huge margins of 20, 30%. If you look on brands like Chrono 24 and see the price of, for example, a 5981R, you'll see this listed for like sometimes 170, 180, but these watches are trading for like 110 to 120. So there are huge margins, 30, 40% at times. And the public conception is that you're going to pay a lot of money when in reality you're not. That is just the, the margin that's there is like 50 grand. Uh, and jewelers are attempting to make that because they have higher positions or they just uh, need to make that because they can't replace the good, right? But they're, they're negotiable. And if you're in the industry, you're probably gonna get a better deal than if you're out of the industry. One of the things that I would recommend in in understanding this is of course, if you don't understand how watch trading works or why or how you can get involved, there's a link in the description right here uh, in like the little description part that tells you not only how to take a free training on how to get started trading watches with as little as $1,500 access to a post office and of course a computer, but also uh, there's a link there to join Watch Trading Academy and join our community of 20,000 plus people that are doing this right from home with that little bit of a baseline. So regardless of you're trading watches for a long time, uh, that you're a hobbyist or that you just wanna get started because you want part-time income, join us, it's a lot of fun. But <clears throat> back to this about Rolexes. Rolex typically have very small margins because they're in such high volume and they're also the most wanted goods. So it's a very competitive brand. So if you think about uh, the majority of Rolex watches, unless you're getting them at 80s at significant discounts, the margin is usually about 1500 to two grand at best and worst case 500 bucks. Uh, and unless you're getting them at the AD and then you have the huge margin. But the majority of guys aren't getting them at the AD, they're getting them on the reseller market. So they're building very small margins. So when the margin does, like when the basis for the margin goes down significantly, like a 30K watch becomes 20K, a 20K watch becomes 10K, you create a huge problem there in between. 
And what happens is not only is the asset worth less and their ability to serve their customers worth less, but the issue with that is that their margin was so small that they didn't just lose a big margin out of the watch and can break even, they're, they're losing basis in the watch and they're going to have to replace the watch. A lot of times when you're losing basis in an item, which we're gonna talk about on the board here for a second, when you're losing basis in an item specifically, uh, you know that you're losing that margin and it gives you time to react. With Rolex you don't, so a lot of dealers panic and panic heavily because of that process. So I'm gonna walk you right here to the board for a second and I'm gonna show you exactly how margins change depending on the brand you're dealing with and also the generic way to understand and look at why basis and inventory isn't always detrimental to dealers except for Rolex specifically, especially now that they've launched the pre-owned program. And if you watch that video, uh, then you kind of know why they're gonna start to panic specifically. So let's go to the board and let me show you how that works. So first let's cover basis. Why do or should not dealers worry when their basis comes down? Well, let's say for example, you have a watch that you paid 100K for, and that watch is going to 150K, or should I say that is its retail, right? And that is your wholesale, okay? So you bought it at 100, and it's basically, you have that 50K in between in margin, right? So whenever that market falls down, let's say wholesale goes to 80K, you typically would think you lost 20K, but look at that, first off, there's a delay, it takes much longer for this number to move down. And when it does, it goes to 120 to 130K. So historically, if you're here at 100K, you still have good margin to make. So one, is there a delay? Well, you have all this time basically to still make 20, 30K, right? And it's a lot better than the little amount of time you have here that basically reacts. So if you're a real, dealer and you're selling to real people, you have time to react to market changes because of these gigantic margins that exist on watches. So this is fantastic. This is one of the reasons why a lot of jewelers and dealers, just like car dealers, can make moves in cars knowing that it takes them a little bit of time, but they'll move markets. The other thing to also understand is this game works off of margins. So if you have 500K in inventory in general, right? This is your total inventory, okay? So you have 500K in inventory. Your margin is typically 10 to 12%. So you're taking that 10 to 12%, which is basically 50 to somewhere around 60K on that money uh, per month. So basically you're recycling that money on an average of that. That's how your inventory works. Now, let's say your inventory gets slashed and it's only worth 300K. Well, here's why that doesn't matter because your basis stays the same in terms of your margin. So what happens is your margin has gone down, now you're only producing 30 to 40K per month, which is a problem. But to be clear, you're still creating that flow. So times four, right, times four, you're basically now back up to uh, your 80, 160. So in four months, you will now have 460K back in your account. So you will have four months of downturn, but you have not lost significant amounts of money. Now, here is the other difference. Whenever entire markets crash, like what we've had recently, as in they come down, what 500K bought you, that was a lot. You were excited, you were getting a lot of stuff, but this wasn't a high market. You were also paying a higher premium for a watch. In a lower market, while your value has only gone to 300, your buying power hasn't changed. Because while you were buying one watch at 100K, selling it for 150, right? And now that 100K watch is worth 80K, so you lost 20K. But that same 80K will buy you the same thing that that 100K was buying you back then. So all watches come down, therefore that specific unit right, even though some can come down more than others, that specific dollar that has come down can still service another watch and it puts you in the same position. So like if you bought, for example, a watch for 200K and then the, you had two options and I'll give you a, a cleaner, simpler example so you can kind of understand. So you have two options. You can buy an open worked 41 and that watch was 200K as an example, right? Or you can buy, for example, a Patek 5980 and on bracelet that's 200K. So 200K will buy you one of these two watches. If you buy this one at 200K and now the market goes to 150, well, you would be pretty pissed because you lost 50K. But I would also argue that now this watch has also gone to 150. So if you believed you bought the wrong watch, you can still trade 
for that exact same watch and it holds the same leverage of value. Some watches are recession proof and will hold better, others will not. Jewelers and dealers do their best to kind of predict which models are rare, harder to get, and are gonna bring a higher premium over time. But this is why their basis can't really lose if they're buying the right inventory. Now, where do gray market and these dealers that suck, these gray market dealers, where do they make a mistake? If you buy a 15K Rolex and your margin is only $500, right? Well, this is too little of a margin to react. So as this goes down from 15 to 14 to 13 to 10 to nine, this isn't going to be enough to do it. Now, the majority of people on Instagram pretending to be rich basically have no money. So they've been consigning watches and they own maybe one or two watches. So we see this historically all the time. So if you only have $30,000, you don't have enough buying power to make a margin, especially if you've only learned to make $500 margins. So if you have 30K, remember, this is the other thing that's really interesting. If you have 30K and you're good at a jeweler, if you've learned the Watch Trading Academy process of retailing deals, et cetera, you're looking at $30,000 that is making 10 to 12% a month. So what is that? That's roughly three to 4K a month, right? But if you're a wholesaler who's been hanging out on the Rolex forums too often, and all you know from your left nut to your right one is literally how to make $500 margins hawking Rolexes thinking you're hot shit, even though you're poor, well, you look at that for 30 grand, you're making only $1,000. That's what I want you to try to understand, is that when your margin is this low, the money doesn't compound fast enough and you can't react fast enough to markets. Because if this value drops and you're only making 500, it only needs to drop for a day or five more units come on the market and you're already wiped clean to zero. And that's the argument about why so many resellers are going out of business as soon as these markets come down. So this is something just important to understand. Recessions and down markets, even though I would argue the watch market is significantly better than crypto or anything else has been by far. I was actually doing analysis with a student who has lost 11% on an entire watch portfolio, 11% were versus, you ready for this? 82% if it was in crypto. So like, I want you to understand that, that gauge. I would take this on a minus any day versus this 82%, so it doesn't make sense. Now I've argued against crypto quite some time and I have my own reasons why I don't believe in it and I think it's stupid, but that is an argument all for itself for another time. So this has been kind of an understanding about why resellers and individuals just panic that regardless that Rolex offered a certified pre-owned program or not, or how their thought process can consume and why watches are basically recession proof. So I showed you that even when markets fall and portfolios come down, if you're learning the right process, the way we teach it at Watch Trading Academy, then you are not necessarily in a bad place. You just need to work your way back up. And that is very doable, even if that does take some time. So there you have it. This has been my analysis of the market, what's going on, and what you need to pay attention to. And I'll catch you in another video for Watch Trading Academy. And don't forget, click the link, learn the training, and you tell me your thoughts. Am I right? Am I crazy? Like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll catch you next time.